today, but tell us about Tokyo 2020, the race. You won a bronze medal, it was a great result, but it wasn't an easy journey because of COVID. One minute it was on, one minute the Olympics was off. So tell us about the emotions. Amazing question there, Ben, in that I was so fortunate to be selected along three other amazing individuals to chase the Tokyo 2020 Olympic journey with being Cam, Caleb and Luke. And it, like, like you said, COVID created this crazy landscape of uncertainty and in a sport that's already can be wildly uncertain with all the international travel and where you'll end up with results, we were able to create a very diluted down, simple process of will it make the boat go faster? A simple binary decision we could make day to day, stroke to stroke. And in that, it just became so much easier to stay present in everything we were doing in terms of preparation. And that transferred over into the race. We didn't have to, when we were lining up, it wasn't some Herculean task. It was each stroke just had to think, what, what will I do to make the boat go as fast as possible? And it was a whirlwind of a race out there. I mean, the, the Dutch who in it won the race inevitably set the world record quarter crab. There were, there were three crowds in the Olympic final where multiple records were set. So it's crazy to think about in that regard, the wildest of conditions, the perfect storm. But I remember crossing that line and sort of tying back to saying everything was a, was a present of mind decision in will it make the bird go faster. After we crossed that line, I was just able to reflect on the journey and what it had been. And it was just this crazy flood of emotions. I started thinking about the future, thinking about the past, and it was just overwhelming. But overall, the guys who I got to go on that journey with really made it special and brought the most out of me. And when that bronze medal went around your neck, tell us about that 10 seconds that we all dream about all the time. First off, I thought, this is pretty good. <laughs> uh, it's amazing to receive something of that significance and magnitude to commemorate such a result and a journey because you're not, even though the medal is awarded for five minutes, five and a half minutes of performance on the day is indicative of the years and decade and a bit of work that you've put in getting to that stage. And in that, I, I remember seeing uh, other guys on the team, some who had had better results than us and some who had the results that they weren't quite proud of. And we'd all been on the same journey. So anyone out there who's, chasing a chasing a uh, medal or a podium result just remember the more present you are in the, in the day-to-day -day process the better the chance will be of standing on that dais at the end of the day when it matters once upon a time nick garrett was quoted the late nick garrett was quoted in a major newspaper at nationals and he said this Western Australian crew is full of scholars, the 99 crew that what with Stuart reside in the stroke seat that won the King's Cup. <laughs> and he said, we scholars bow down to nobody. Tell us about the intangibles that you need to do to blend in those strong, we don't bow to nobody type personalities, scholar type personalities. Great question, Ben. And in that you hit the nail on the head, and to elaborate on it, not only were they four very strong and unique personalities, I don't think you could have found four people who had more, more different interests and hobbies and whatnot, four different walks of life. And I don't think, when we looked back on it, 
those us four individuals had never actually rode a crew together in that combination at all in the prep of the five years of being at the centre. So in that it was, a lot of people said it was the last lineup you would have thought to put out at trial of us four. And afterwards when we sat down, we had, we just, we sat in a room, we had a meeting with our coach, Mark Crater, and we established one thing that we could all have in common to be the basis of how we worked. And that was a massive amount of respect for how hard each of us had to work to get to where we were. And from there, we decided to base all, we made a promise, all future communication would be grounded in the respect we had. So our theme was respectful communication. And this message can be taken from the national team all the way down to your local club boats, your year nine scratch quad, or even other, like, other sports and walks of life in your professional work. It is pivotal that if you if you ask to bring the most out of someone else by first reflecting on what you've done, you'll be out. You will move forward as a unit and improve together. So that's sort of how we started our journey together. And moving forward, we really, I know a lot of us attribute the success to, that we had to that respectful communication is the basis of everything we do. Let's conclude the episode by the phrase, dancing on water. What does that phrase mean to you? And what do you think that phrase will mean to a young novice rower or a young schoolgirl or schoolboy rower who is aspiring to be like Jack Cleary? Amazing question, Ben. And in that, Dancing to me is an amazing form of self-expression and to tie that into dancing on water, it's in and out of the boat, it's just being yourself and having the confidence to try new things and be okay being uncomfortable and what I could pass on as a message to any young aspiring athlete is to honestly give it a go and be yourself. And over time, people who appreciate that energy and that willingness to try new things will gravitate towards you and you'll be able to bring the most out of yourself and therefore you'll bring the most out of them. But just never stop being yourself and always giving your best. Thanks again, Jack. Thanks again for communicating clearly. <laughs> no pun intended. Thanks so much for having me again, Ben. It's been a pleasure. Take care, man. Stay safe, everyone.